What's up guys, it's your boy New York Hobbies, back in again with another video. So if you guys saw the last video of my Sonic model mini era wing, I did say the next video was going to be, that was going to be the last, technically the last video of 2020, and I said the next video was going to be an update video. But before I post the update video, and before I do all that, I want to go through some stuff with my, probably my favorite plane that I own, and that is my eSky Eagles converted into full-on GPS uh, autopilot. And what I want to do today is because I am running an SNL, I know that there's not that much information on an SNL. And what I wanted to do was show you the wiring diagram of people who just decided to get the SNL or you're doing research that if you want to get the SNL to make sure what to do and not to mess up or damage something, uh, you know, costly. So I want it to be a very short video and I'm just going to go through the wiring diagram the next video I will have is going through the menus. And then the third video I will have is my full on setup of this plane, full on menu, whatever I have set up, um, rates, whatever, whatever, I'll show you guys all that. So let's get it on the table behind me and let's, uh, let's go over the wiring diagram. Very short video, so I'll be right back. Now we got the plane on the, on the bench, I wanna show you the wiring diagram. So the SNL has everything labeled for you. Uh, let me just make sure my camera can focus. SNL has everything labeled for you from RSSI to PPM, aux, everything, even signal to negative wire. Now this is very basic. Now you have your normal, your normal PPM or S bus. Now S bus is probably better because it will have some receivers have integrated RSSI, which is good because then you know your signal strength um, when you're flying far. How I know my signal strength when I'm flying far, my Flysky FSI6X has a signal strength like measurement on program into the remote already out of 10, and that's how I know. But RSSI is size a little bit better because it's always on your OSD. Now, below that, you have AUX1 and AUX2. AUX1 and AUX2 can be pretty much whatever you want. That can be a, another servo, like how I have my tilting servo here, or it can also be, um, you know, maybe if you have lights, you can set a light switch. So, you know, if you have lights, you can do that. Also, AUX channel also uses is if you have an airspeed sensor. So the way the airspeed sensor works is that if you buy the airspeed sensor, you see aileron slash AS. Now you have to put that aileron in like AUX1 and an airspeed sensor in there. And then the, the whole settings board does that. Um, for flying purposes... Airspeed sensor is not most mandatory thing in the world, but if you really want that accurate data, then, you know, uh, airspeed sensor would be nice. Below that, we have aileron, throttle, all that good stuff. Now, the way that I have it, I am running a UBEC. I am running the same type of setup that Ali Shamo uses in his Rambler RS, and that is he's, I am running an external UBEC in the front. Don't worry, I'll take off the canopy in a little bit. I'm running an external UBEC in the front, and... The red wire from the ESC is completely chopped off. Now, the reason why I'm running a UBIC, and the same reason that Ali Shamo is running a UBIC, is just in case if the ESC decides to die for some reason, you will still have power to your servos. I'm not worried about it because my ESC is a 30 amp ESC, and this motor only does on my Lion pack no more than 16 amps and then 20 amps on a LiPo. So I'm not worried about it. But if you know, if that was going to happen for any reason, my ESC down there, I'm running a, a, uh, I'm not running the stock eSky ESC anymore because I broke it. I am running a, um, Zod, right? Zod? Yeah. Zod Nano Talon ESC. Yeah. Running a Zod Nano Talon ESC in there, which fit perfect because they have the two millimeter bullet connectors. So just in case if the Zod ESC ever dies, I will still have power to my servos. After that, we have PMU and GPS. Now, the things with these connectors, you have to make sure you have them in right. They only go in one way because they have little stubs that only go into a slot. If you put them in the wrong way and you power up the mod, if you power up the plane through the PMU by connecting your battery, there's a chance that you could fry the, the GPS or the, the, the SNL. You don't want that. Another good thing about the SNL is that there's an arrow here and that arrow should be pointing forward. Now listen, if you can't put your if you can't put your SNL forward, then you can actually switch it in the menu. But we'll worry about that in the next video. 
So that's pretty much the wiring diagram from this. So now give me a second, I'll be right back and I'll take off the canopy and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so now we have the wire, now we have the canopy come off. I have a glow igniter here because once you take off the canopy and if you have no lipo in it, the canopy is the only thing that actually holds down the plane, at least for me, probably because I have all this weight on here. But if you don't have a battery in it, it wants to tip back and I didn't want that for the video. So I decided to put my glow igniter here. So just ignore that. So here is my UBEC. I am running a Hobbywing 5 volt UBEC. And I'm running, and I bought this uh, 3S to JST, or you can buy a 4S to JST, or you can buy a 2S to JST. No matter what, the Hobbywing UBEC will bump down the voltage to 5 volts. So all my servos are getting perfectly 5 volts. So the PMU here has a sort assortment of wires sticking out of it. Now that wires is pretty much all of these down here that go into the PMU port. Now there is two wires that are fixated with this. This third servo wire is not for, it's not a part of the PMU. That's actually an aux channel I have for my steerable, not my steerable, not my steerable, uh, you know, camera, my pan camera. It's that serve, that's what that's over for. But these two wires are most important and you'll see them when you get your, when you get your flight controller. This one here with the yellow cable is for um, a video transmitter. This one is for your camera. Now, one thing about these two is that they both have nine volts output. So my video trans, your video transmitter will get nine volts and your, and your camera will get nine volts. Make sure that you have a camera and a video transmitter that can take nine volts. You don't want anything frying itself while it's sitting there, okay? Here, we just gotta solder on a normal XC60 and on the other side of the PMU, cause they don't come, uh, when you first get the PMU, it doesn't come with any battery connectors. You got soldered on for the ESC side. And that's pretty much the whole wiring diagram. Now, oh, well actually I'm missing one more thing. Last thing I'm missing is the GPS wire. Now the GPS is, comes with a very long wire because SNL or AFPV can't tell how long of cable do you need, so they just give you a long one just in case. You can always solder it down, but be careful not to solder the wrong wire to the wrong wire. That would really suck. So my GPS is back on this tail. I have a whole bunch of assortment of tape to keep it out the way of this deaf spinning propeller. And it comes up through the bottom through a little hole I have here, comes up to the bottom and connects to the GPS port. Now also this goes in one way. Make sure you don't put it the other way unless you'll probably never find GPS satellites. And there you pretty much go. The SNL is a very easy GPS to set up and it's even easier to use because all the settings are in are in the actual, you know, flight control. You can use all the settings through your remote. So everything is good. Everything's good. That's why SNL is such a good flight controller, in my opinion, for the price. It comes at around $65 with everything besides battery connectors and obviously other electronics like the plane and ESCs, whatever, and, uh, you know, UBEX. But you, what, what comes with the SNL is the flight controller, the GPS, and the PMU and obviously the wires that come with it. Very easy to set up and yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, I'll be right back. I forgot one of the most important things of this whole wiring diagram as I was editing the video right here. I forgot that for PPM and SBUS, you have to have a, a male to male servo connector that one goes into P, one goes into the flight controller and the other one goes into your output, your SBUS or PPM output. Now remember, when you have SBUS or PPM output, it looks like you have a lot of free channels because all your channels are going into the, to the SNL. That is wrong. You do not wanna have any of those channels lined up. Now also, before I even go on, you need two extra channels for your mode switches. So it's one through four and then five and six. You should have nothing plugged in between two and six to ensure that your that the SNL won't mess up for any chance. Now, if you have a 10 channel receiver like I do, you have um, seven, eight, nine, and then 10, and then the, for my controller, um, also a battery port. Now, those are free, but, but one through six is not free, except for one or wherever your S bus channel is at. Just letting you guys know, all right, and uh, back to the video.
All right, well, that was pretty much it. That was pretty much the wiring diagram, um, pretty much of how the uh, SNL will go. I will also show a picture on the screen now of what Banggood shows as the wiring diagram. The only problem about the Banggood wiring diagram is that it has the airspeed sensor in it. So if you have the airspeed sensor, you just have to switch out the airspeed sensor and the, ele and the elevator, uh, yeah, the elevator servo back to its normal position, like how I have. I have only one aux channel, which is, like I said, the servo. So it is very simple and you can assign um, a switch or whatever you want for an aux channel like this. Since I only have two, three position switches and you need two, three position switches, I will go over that in my next video. Um, I am running this on a potentiometer little dial and it, it, it works great. Very simple GPS. Um, I have flown this before and it, it pretty much worked great. I didn't really test RTH or return to home or altitude hold because I was in a very small field for how much space you need for this plane. So I wasn't very comfortable, you know, turning those modes on and it accidentally hitting a bridge because I was flying between two bridges. So yeah, very easy, very cheap. Um, a contender with this type of uh, GPS, which is all in one GPS is like the Vector or whatever like that, or the Detrum Z3 is the Detrum V3. That is a very good con uh, contender, but um, if you guys watch Archangel, his Detrum Z3 wasn't really working that well. So I'm hoping that you pick this choice. I'm not sponsored by Banggood, none of that stuff. I just feel like SNL, this, this flight controller is my very first flight controller and it, it works like a dream unless you don't mess with any settings pretty much. So yeah. Um, $65 on Banggood, you really can't go wrong with an all-in-one, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, it's very easy to di diagram. I I, uh, I was a beginner like you guys. If you guys are first beginners watching my video, I know you guys probably felt nervous about buying a, a, a full-on flight controller for the first time, but I promise you this one will probably work great. And if not, I'll have extra videos to go on. So yeah, this has been your boy, Nigger Hobbyist. Stay tuned for the next video of the just the format and the walkthrough of how everything works in the plane and what settings you need to adjust. I don't fully, fully understand this fully uh, con flight controller, but I know most to give out information that is worthy of listening to. So uh, yeah, see you in my next video. Keep driving RC, keep flying RC. You guys have a great day and I will see you. Peace.